right. Uh, so those of you who don't remember, uh, I'm going to choose a core technique from the, the black belt technique list that I want to work on. And tonight we're going to look at the uh, sit through. Then I want to look at uh, how to counter the sit through. We'll see kind of what time we have left and we'll hit the quick kill. All right. So uh, Marty. Couple of things that I see as a problem for the sit through. Will you turtle for me? A good training partner, uh, just for a training position, chest, hands over here by the knees. Uh, one of the things you need to know about this technique is that if you're being a training partner or defending or rolling, there's no scenario in which you should be on top, on your knees, with your hands wrapped around the body, or with your knees up. Right? It doesn't have anything to do with this. Never lock your hands together. Better hand position. All right, you're on top. So, one of the things that I see is that people will initiate this move with their head still underneath the body. You're never going to escape if you'd be able to do that, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my body, or you can drive forward until your head pops out. But the reality is you need to get your head out from underneath. In the kids' class, we say draft eats the leads, right? They, they lead with the head. The next thing that I see is that people will get here, and they go like this, and they try to use the arm to throw the person off. That ain't going to do it either, guys. Now, it'll work with a training partner that's letting you out, but the reality is this movement is done by sitting my hips all the way through, and I want to have a good stiff body. So my neck is stiff, my body is stiff, my hips come up, and then I turn towards the back here. If you have floppy hips, right, you come here, you come here, they're just going to spin to your back, right? That's going to be a problem. So make sure you have that stiff neck. Relax. That neck is going to pull their body over top of you and your hips are gonna go under. So I clear my head, post, I wave, and then to the back. Again, my head's out, post. Are my hips on the floor? Nope. No. And then to the back, different angle. Two different ways, right? I can clear my head here, here, or I can turn my body. Here, I am waving, my hips are up, and then to the back. Make sense? Let's get it. One, two, no knocking. That's what I call like, and then you look, and then you go. You can't do that. This is not a move where you wait and see if it works out. Like, you sit through with the intention that it's going to work, and if it doesn't, we're going to figure out later. Everyone understand? So you can't go like this. You can't go, okay, my head, good, okay. Yeah. Guys, you can't stay here. Uh, it really is. Like, grab my shoulder. Like, when you're like, get off me. But it's with your head. So, uh, down on the bottom. I had you here, but what's ending up happening is, will you halfway uh, sit through and stop the feet back there? You guys are stopping here, and it's difficult for you to get a good neck extension. Go back. So, instead of here, now I want you to bring your hands up here. And what you're going to notice is my armpit aligns closer to the back of his head. And so I need that full extension of the neck. A lot of you are having floppy necks because you're clearing your head, but then you're doing it with your arm instead of your neck. So my hands, instead of by the knees, are going to come up here closer to the elbows. Marty's going to go to sit through. And watch where his head, yes, catches closer at the back of my armpit and throws my hands to the floor. So again, I'm here. Look at where my head is. I sit. And you see how I threw his body away when I threw my head back? This is not good enough. It has to be full extension as far as you can go. Make sense? Let's get it. One, two. All right, my favorite way to counter is simply peeing on the fire hydrant, right? I'm a dog, I go up to the fire, just this, okay? And so it's all timing, Now, yeah? So I put my hands, he clears his head, he goes to sit through, and I just throw that leg right over while he sits through. It's going to be a timing thing. If you miss it, they're gonna duck out. You probably get kind of finished in a little bit of a double leg. If you hit it just right, they basically throw themselves into mount underneath you. Practice your timing nice and slow at first so that you don't kick, you kick your, your partner or knee your partner in the face, right? So I'm here. What, what? Freeze. What's my indicator on which side he's going to go to? So his head Whichever side his head pops out, right? So I feel his head pop out. Ooh, okay. He starts to sit. I lift straight into mount. This way. His head. I lift. Straight into mount. Other way. Lift. I like to control the back of the tricep or the head area when they're sitting through. Just here, and then straight to the floor. Make sense? Let's give it a shot. One, two. 
You know what the biggest mistake in the army when people throw hand grenades? What is it? No, they they want to watch it explode. You're like, yeah, but if you can see it explode, like it can kind of get you, right? We all on the same page. So you throw a grenade and you kind of get down. So what I see is you guys are like, this move looks really cool. And so while they're sitting underneath you, you're watching them. And what's happening is you go to throw your hips forward, but you can't because you're looking down. So um, you're like this. He sits through and you're looking, right? You're like, you're fine. I need you to look up and away because that's what will allow you to extend your hips. So when I'm here, I'm up and I'm away. It might be a bad angle. Let's do it this way. Keep this way. So I'm here, he sits through, I'm up and I'm away. All right? It has to be timing, and they're basically throwing themselves underneath you, but if you watch them, it's gonna to feel totally different. The, the feeling with your hips and pelvic area is very simple, uh, very similar to the hip bump. So when you come up with a hip bump, you're looking away and extending and pushing with your hips, right? Same thing here. So don't hit your partner in the face, go slow, but you don't get to look at them, so I get how that could be difficult, okay? <laughs> Practice, slow first. Let's get one, two, time. And the answer is failed double legs. Yeah. Uh, being a, a little bit larger of nature, my, my level uh, changes and explosiveness wasn't what I wanted it to be. And so a lot of times I would shoot a double leg with the intention of just making them sprawl. Like it was my, my double leg's good enough to make someone sprawl, but usually not good enough to get a hold of their legs. And so I would never even try to finish a double leg. I would just shoot a bad double and then sit through on people. And so great, great technique. Uh, and it plays a lot. The second move, if you have the fire hydrant, good move, great move, bad move, what? Yeah. If you hit somebody with it, it'll be the one time in your life, right, against that person. That's one of those moves when it happens to you and, and you're good. It's because you've never seen it before and you're like, well, that's never going to happen again, right? That's like a <laughs> take off your wrestling shoes and go home move, all right? So we're on the same page. Uh, now we're going to look at uh, what I consider to be a terrible move. But um, it is a classic jujitsu move, and if you don't know it or how to get out of it, uh, then it can, I guess, make you tap once or twice. And so, like a quick kill, uh, trouble head this way. So, uh, variation of the uh, clock choke, but it's a one-handed choke, so it's kind of like half loop, half uh, clock. But my setup hand goes in front of the shoulder, and I get a hold of that lapel. It does not have to be deep. Now I'm going to take this hand. I'm going to feed it in by his neck. And then I'm going to rotate my hips towards the ceiling, just like the sit through. It's why I taught the sit through with this technique, right? So I'm here, my arm comes through, and then I'm going to turn my hips this way. And notice, he tapped, right? If you hear them go, that counts as tap, because a lot of people will be here with their hands on the floor, and it goes from nothing to getting strangled immediately, and they may panic, right? So if you hear a struggle, let go. Hand in front, hand around, I'm turning my hips up and towards the ceiling. Now, one of the mistakes I see is that people will come like this. This is discounting the most powerful part of your body, and that's the rotation, right, the core. So arm through, right? My arm comes through if you want your elbow, that's okay. I'm turning my hips up. After they tap, let go with your hand. I want to see the full rotation, just like the sit through. Okay, let's get it. One, two. Rotate and how you uh, uh, block out the, the neck and head can, can change. But the only reason that you would get finished with this is because you don't know what to do when they start to choke you. And so basically what you do is the traditional escape or if you want to think of it as an off angle sit through, it's the same thing. So Marty, come on over here, buddy. <clears throat> I make some mistakes, he goes through, I forgot where I was, choke me. Okay, cool, I messed up. If you don't do it right away and you feel like you're gonna black out, just tap, okay? Again, so now he's gonna choke me, uh-oh, I'm gonna post the foot behind him and then I'm just gonna sit through and it kills the choke. Now let's imagine that I can't take him over, right? And he's choking me, if I just turn, oh, okay, cool, the back control, right? That's why this move is garbage. If you commit to the, the bridge up and turn, right, and it goes bad, a lot of times you get your back taken. So, all I want you to do, and I want you to fall to your side with your belly towards them, okay? And you're gonna have a little bit of discovery learning on what is a good set of grips. Seat belt, good grips, collar grips, good. Can I get a hook in? I don't care, just play through it. He's choking me, 
right? I just fall to, oh, okay, cool, shit. Right? I don't care as long as you don't tap to that. They're gonna be the one that's scrambling because their back is exposed. Which way do you turn? Away from them or towards them? Towards them. Towards them. The arm is gonna be the problem. So when I fall to the side, if you bring your arm through and you sit, that's back control. If you leave your arm in and you open, that's traditional turtle escape. So they both work, but whether I end it because I sweep them over top of me or I take their back is gonna be the inside arm. Nice and slow while you figure it out. Ready? One, two. All right. I'm exhausted because I'm doing the moves that I teach you guys all the time. So if you're not sweating like this, man, you really ain't training. Getting out of breath is good. Doing it while you're tired is good. Fitting the moves in in reality is good. Everything else is just, it's not real, right? You got, you got to practice it for real in order for it to be yours. So you should sweat, train, come watch my videos, then sweat, train, come watch my videos.